having me here. In thinking about this theme of space, I had a tough time with it because if you think about that word space, it's above you, it's the distance between you and someone else, it's the distance between um, objects. So there's this environment, there's a space, there's so many ways that you could approach this theme and I found it a bit overwhelming in trying to connect all of this to my work. Um, meeting with Brandon a few weeks ago, we kind of hashed out some ideas and essentially I'm going to break my talk up into kind of three parts. I'll talk a little bit about my approach as an artist, um, sharing a little bit about the creative process, um, followed by a project called Resophonic City, which I really feel fits with this theme of space. And then if there's um, some time at the end, I'll open it up to any questions. I feel a bit of pressure right now because I have to have this nugget of gold to give you um, <laughs> to be silk screened. And that's going to be tough for you. So hopefully you can twist my words um, and get something interesting. Um, so I've been working with sound kind of, I guess, fairly seriously for the past 10 years. Um, prior to working with it in a non -abs or in an abstract way, in a non-linear way, I kind of used a number of different instruments um, in traditional formats, guitar, um, various acoustic instruments to um, kind of communicate what I wanted to communicate. But in being in um, traditional bands or um, having other opportunities to play these instruments, I kind of felt the need to progress um, and to experiment and explore other I guess, opportunities and realms that sound could offer. So I started to take uh, just guitar or other instruments and record them into various software programs to degrade, change, uh, just essentially make something that didn't exist prior. From that, I kind of started to work with found sounds, um, a sound that could just be a captured from a chair moving along the floor, using that as a textured element in a greater composition. Recording um, an environment, like a field recording, um, and also capturing samples from cassette or reel-to-reel -reel and more kind of, I guess, lately taking those samples from uh, film. So taking all these sources, dumping them into different um, software programs, degrading these sources, repurposing, processing, um, allows me to kind of communicate something that, that didn't exist before, and it, it's fun. Um, through this, I've had a number of opportunities to release my works on various formats and on various labels. As well, the opportunity to, to travel and to perform um, some of these works in throughout North America and throughout Europe. So I try to go to Europe every second year, and back in 2010, uh, one of the artists that I often perform with when I'm over there is a fellow by the name of Nicola Ratti, and he is a musician and sound artist from Milan, um, also an architect. After our performances and time in, in the little tour we did throughout Italy, he mentioned it would be great that um, if him and I could could collaborate on something. And I thought, that's great. So I got back to Edmonton after this tour in 2010, and I kind of thought about that a little more, and we started emailing back and forth. And one of the things that he said is, it would be really important if we, if we completed something that didn't necessarily represent my work and didn't necessarily represent his work. And I liked that idea. Upon like listening to this project, we wanted it to be apart from us, kind of bigger or greater than us. So we came up with this idea of Resophonic City, and I really feel like this is how um, I'm going to tie into this theme of space. 
Um, Resophonic City being an idea that compares how sound interacts um, in Edmonton um, to sound and how it interacts in Milan. So often when you think of an environment, you think really um, about the visual elements that, that come up in your mind. Uh, but we wanted to kind of see how sound could, I guess, um, reflect on how somebody um, interprets that space as well. So Edmonton and, and Milan are very different. There's a lot of history in Milan. Um, the architecture is much different. The way the city is made is much different versus something like Edmonton is much younger uh, in its development and there's a lot of urban sprawl. There's just an opportunity to kind of um, continue building um, communities and spaces as far as one can see. So I like this idea that these two places are very different. So essentially what we did is we took a small analog synthesizer and recorded simple loops, low frequencies, high frequencies, um, 30 second loops, one minute loops. We then um, looped that for you know, a period of like three to five minutes and then dumped that onto our iPods. Our iPods were then connected to a car amplifier which was powered by a 12 volt battery, which then um, from the amplifier had uh, a couple car speakers. So essentially this allowed us the opportunity to project these sounds um, in a way that was very portable. So we could go to a space in Edmonton, uh, as you see behind me, a space in Argyle, and we could set our little portable PA up and have the sound kind of interact with this environment to bounce off of the materials and also to resonate um, and kind of just dissipate. And through that, we set up a couple microphones to capture how this sound interacts with this environment. And we, you know, we thought this was a great idea in applying for um, funding and such. Some people didn't think it was a great idea. Um, but that's okay. Um, in the end, we did receive uh, some funding, so we we were able to kind of um, go forward and complete this project. But we thought it was a great idea, but as we started, we went to the first location, which was not the location behind me, and we started to, to um, explore and experiment with this, and it, it kind of, we just were really un unsure if this was just gonna be a failed experiment. Um, thankfully, we went to uh, the place in Argyle, and that was good, but then a number of other locations weren't so, um, I guess the sound just really wasn't that interesting. And our fear was that it was going to be something that people really couldn't um, resonate with. They would, you know, maybe listen to it once and it wouldn't really, wouldn't really say much. But thankfully, we, um, I took Nicola to, when he came to Edmonton, I took him to um, a parkade. And he was really uh, taken with this parkade because in Milan, there are no parkades. And he was really taken with the idea that at 7 o'clock on a weeknight, if you go downtown Edmonton, there's no one in these parkades. And he said in his um, cute little Italian accent, where are all the people? <laughs> and I said, welcome to Edmonton. Like, <laughs> um, there aren't a lot of people. So we started to kind of work with this idea of Resophonic City in Edmonton first in, a, in parkades, in various parkades. We would project the sound and we would record how the sound interacted in this parkade. We took the microphones and we stepped outside of the parkades and recorded how the sound, um, I guess, flooded and cascaded outside of this parkade. And we were happy with the results. So Edmonton was a very, very open sound. And like I mentioned, it was void of human interaction in a way. And I don't mean that in a negative way. That's just the reality of it. Um, so after our Edmonton uh, time, we then needed to kind of consider where we were going to be recording and projecting sounds in Milan and how, how Milan is different from Edmonton. And upon reflecting on this, Nicola came up with this idea of connecting to um, where people live. So a lot of the sounds that we captured in Edmonton were really void of human interaction. When we went to Milan, we wanted to find an area that was maybe a little bit closer to human, um, closer to people. So um, there's a common 
common corridors in Milan where in apartment buildings they have this kind of common area. It's quite, I said common like three times there. It's quite common. <laughs> um, and this allows, um, allows you to kind of step into this area and it allows you to hear, I guess, your voice or other sounds and how it's resonating in this area, but it also allows um, people's homes to kind of seep into this. So we went into these areas, projected the sound, and we got a much closed, much more closed, smaller sound. Um, so there was a clear difference between the two, and we were happy with that. Um, also went to a number of different abandoned spaces. Um, I'm trying really hard not to look at the pictures because I really don't like it when um, people do an artist talk or um, they're doing a, they're teaching somebody and they're like, as you can see, the uh, shadow there, um, spray paint. <laughs> so I'm trying hard not to do that. Uh, just had to do that once, okay? Um, so we were really happy that the results were musical because we were worried that it was just going to be a strong conceptual piece that people basically took in and um, if, it was, if it were to be released on vinyl, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, that they would really only spin it once and that would be it. So we were happy after we finished all these recordings and we got together with a, um, a friend of ours, uh, Giuseppe Alassi, um, to kind of help us with producing it. We were really happy when we heard it, we are like, yeah. Um, that it was a musical um, process that we basically took. So once we finished this uh, process in Edmonton, um, recording these spaces, um, process in Milan, we then continued the project. And we passed um, the audio files to a photographer in Edmonton named Leanne Olson. And she essentially listened to the sound um, without knowing the space or the environment or the city. And she listened to these and she interpreted the sound visually. And from that, we did um, an installation at Latitude 53, um, which happened this past May and June. Um, and it was really important for us to continue this process and continue this project. So I talked a little bit earlier of the fact that um, we didn't want this to be about, about my work or about Nicola's work. It was something that, um, it was beyond us. It was a collaborative project. So this allowed us to continue the project um, further, handing it off to Leanne, um, having her interpret this. And then it doesn't stop there. Uh, this fall, there'll be um, a visual artist, I believe his name is um, Alessandro Roma, who will um, interpret the sound the same way Leanne Olson has, and he will um, do a visual element for an um, exhibition in Milan. So again, the project is greater than us, and it continues. It's not done there. Um, there's a, uh, the finished result is not only an audiovisual installation of our findings and, and of our process, but it's also meant to be a, an LP. So one side will have the Edmonton sounds, which is about a finished mix of about 18 minutes. One track will be on one side of, a, of an LP. On the other side, there will be the Milan, which lasts about the same, and it won't be labeled. So people are essentially encouraged to take um, in the sound however they will. Leanne is going to be doing some of the, um, the photos, because there'll be a photo booklet. So this is going to be released later uh, in 2013 on an Italian label. So, um, <clears throat> as you can see, there's uh, some photos of the um, installation that occurred in, at Latitude 53 in their new space this past May and June. So, um, upon doing this talk, I wanted to kind of leave the last part to show you a couple samples of the finished work. Um, just about a 30 to 40 second sample from the Edmonton um, um, sounds and from the Milan. And I'll kind of let you listen to them and reflect on whether or not you can determine, I guess, which city um, is which sample.
So there you have it. That's kind of the finished um, audio work. Anyone have any ideas which city is which sample? Um, I'm sure you could probably tell from the second there's um, languages that um, are not necessarily as common um, in Edmonton as they are there. Actually, I think it was uh, Portuguese in the, in the second sample. Um, it's from Milan. Uh, there was like a weird soccer volleyball game happening in an abandoned pool space. Um, yeah, <laughs> you heard me correctly. That's a good quote, okay? Um, and yeah, also some other elements uh, as far as uh, that connected with the space. And then the first one um, I actually is from Edmonton, but I don't really remember um, what location um, but we connect more with like frogs, as you heard in the in the first um, and Milan. They connect with people. That sounds bad. Okay. Um, okay. So the last thing I kind of want to leave you with is I've had the opportunity over the past um, ten years in working um, in, in the medium of sound to undergo a number of collaborative projects. Uh, collaborative projects with. Um, uh, filmmaker Aaron Munson, Acre Loss back in 2008, um, Resophonic City, which started in kind of in 2010 with Nicole Arati and then continues with um, Leanne Olson and with the um, Milanese uh, visual artist. Uh, as well, I'm collaborating with um, Kyle Armstrong, who's in the back there, uh, a great filmmaker from Edmonton on a project called Extensions, which um, is connected loosely to some of the works of Marshall McLuhan. And every time that I undergo collaboration, it's um, really hard. And um, I'm stealing that quote from Nicola because he, he essentially said that when we started, that collaboration is always hard. But um, I realize that it's always necessary as an artist because it encourages me to progress and grow um, and to become a little bit uncomfortable um, and also to to think of things through um, a different perspective. So it essentially um, is encouraging me to change my creative process um, in hopes to grow. So I guess my encouragement and my last um, nugget of gold for you is to encourage you to, uh, to collaborate because it becomes more about uh, a concept or a project and less about you. So um, people really don't want to always hear about you, but they like to hear about the work that you're doing.